Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's interesting to see you in my morning anyway. I can probably see the clock on my screen. It's still pretty early. Um, I'm an old man. I get up at strange hours in the morning now, and uh, I'm just ready to go. So uh, as I mentioned in class, the first class last week, last Wednesday, um, this, the second class meets on July 4th, which is a university holiday. And so uh, the university's closed, so we can't have class, but there's still some content that I want to cover, and there's some still some things that you need to know and I need to convey to you in order to keep the course going. We've only got eight weeks in the course, and uh, it's not a lot of time to cover all the material that uh, I want to cover, and so what I'm doing to help compensate for that is putting together a handful of screencasts today to uh, to give you what I hope is the, the background that you need to continue to make progress in the course, even though we won't be meeting on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to record a couple of these screencasts sort of throughout the, the day. I'll publish them as soon as they're um, available so that uh, those of you who are playing along at home and want to make some progress on your Sunday can uh, can do so. Um, so let's uh, dive in. Um, the uh, What we're going to focus on uh, first are some things about the, the phone bill project. I've gotten some questions uh, both in email and on the list about the project. Thanks for diving into it and asking questions early. I think this is a good thing and I think it'll serve you guys well and help you get an early start on things uh, so that uh, you know in a couple of weeks you can have a nice solid foundation and focus in on the uh, the more interesting stuff about uh, working with web applications and working with Google Web Toolkit. Um, uh, so uh, we'll get some f foundational stuff out of the way. Um, so to answer some of the questions that, that came across, uh, in particular about the, um, the generic types involved in the, uh, in the phone bill class, I'll just turn it, go over to IntelliJ and open up the, uh, the project that we created on Wednesday night. So this is the project that the phone bill project is created directly from the archetype. Oops. Uh, created directly from the archetype. Uh, and this is probably where you guys started with your projects also. So um, the uh, you know so as I said in the assignment, there are uh, three classes that you need to create. Two are created by the archetype, the project one and the phone call. And there is another class that you need to uh, create. So right click on uh, on the package name, create a new Java class. And we're going to call this phone bill. Oops. Oh yes, I want to add that to Git and don't nag me about it again. Okay. So as you'll recall from the assignment, the phone call uh, extends abstract phone call. Abstract phone, sorry, a phone bill. And it's complaining about some stuff. So it says abstract phone bill must either be declared abstract or implement abstract method add phone call. Um, that's true. Phone bill is a concrete class and abstract phone bill is an abstract class. Let's take a quick tour. Uh, oh, sorry. And so I'm uh, holding down the, the command key and clicking on it. I can also do uh, command B and I'll pop up the oh, really quickly uh, thing. Here's the source code for um, abstract uh, phone bill. And it's kind of interesting. Okay, so I'll just start here with some of the methods. It's got uh, some abstract methods that you need to implement. Um, and it's also got a two string method, which is final, meaning that you cannot override it, um, which is fine and intentional. Now, the interesting thing and the thing I want to focus on here is the, uh, the declaration of the class. So you'll see public abstract class, abstract phone bill, and then it says, oh, it's got this, what's called a type variable. It's type uh, T um, that extends an abstract phone, ball, imp a phone call and implements serializable. There's a lot going on here. Um, let's start, um, move from right to left. Imp implements serializable. Um, this is not something you need to know about in week one. Um, when you start getting into, especially the GWT stuff at the end, serializable will be important because it'll allow the um, the phone bill object to be sent from the GWT uh, server side to the client and back. Um, but we'll get to that uh, later, so you can uh, de-emphasize that for now. I think the most important thing is this T extends abstract phone call. So in the in the lecture notes for week two, we talk about um, generic types in Java. Um, I think a lot of you are already familiar with collections. So like, for instance, down here, we have get phone calls, which is a method on abstract phone call that returns a collection of type T. Now, a collection is an object, uh, well, it's a, yeah, 
it is uh, it is an object. An object that implements the the collection interface that contains other objects. So this is an object that contains other objects. And so, for instance, array lists and vectors and uh, hash sets. All of those are uh, classes that implement uh, directly or indirectly the collection uh, interface, and they contain other objects. The th what generics allow you to do is to specify the type of objects in that collection. So I want a collection of strings, or I want a collection of, uh, of, of integers. In this case, the phone call class returns an, uh, a collection of, of type t, and t here is declared in the class declaration to be some type that extends, oops, that extends, right, where to go? Uh, some type T that extends abstract phone call. Now remember, abstract phone call is my class, is one that I wrote, uh, it's, uh, and, and as is abstract phone bill. What this allows us to do is, uh, well, it's something that we'll, we'll see shortly. You'll, you'll, be, you'll see that even though my class all deals, deals with these abstract uh, classes and the classes that I wrote, it'll allow your class, the actual phone bill, um, to uh, to use your types to make your code well more type safe and also teaches you something about uh, about parameterized types and, uh, and generics in Java. So the whole idea is that the abstract phone bill has abstract phone calls, and so when you do something like you add a, a phone call, uh, you don't add just a an abstract phone call. Uh, you add your type of phone call, and we'll see how that works here in just a moment. And same thing with get phone calls. What you return is a collection of whatever this type T is. So what does this look like in reality? Here in phone bill, we have to say the following. This is extends an abstract phone bill of phone call. Oops. Phone call. And note that this is the phone call that was created by the archetype. This is in uh, this is in your package. So yes, in my case, it's, it's the Whitlock. Remember when we created the archetype, I was pretending to be the, the student, um, and uh, so the, the name of it is um, in, uh, in sort of the student Whitlock's package. If you go and look at your source code, it'll be in your, uh, in your package. So it's this concrete phone call class that we, uh, that we use here. And so now, uh, IntelliJ is still saying, hey, you need to implement those abstract methods. And I'll just uh, use the whatever the option return to uh, implement those methods. It'll say, hey, do you want to create all of them? Yes, please. Cool. And it gives me uh, examples of those. So this is, uh, this is sort of like the complete uh, version. And you can fill in you know, uh, what, your, uh, what your add phone call and what your get phone calls methods do. There are a couple of variations on this, though, that I, uh, I wanted to share with you because I got some questions from, them, uh, from, from students about them. So I'm going to undo that and say, what happens if I do something else? What happens if I just, if I leave this off? And I implement the methods. OK. Uh, this works, too. Um, everything compiles, right? There are no red lines. But there are some things that aren't so great. Uh, about it. Um, IntelliJ is smart enough to know that, okay, well, whatever, whenever you call add phone call, if you look at the, if you look at the declaration, it takes T, which is anything that's an abstract phone call. So, yep, it works with any kind of abstract phone call. Get phone calls, however, it doesn't know what the type T is. It could be, well, actually, it can't really be a collection of abstract phone calls, and if you play around with this more, you'll figure out why. Um, instead, it has no type associated with it. It's, it's the raw type, um, which doesn't give you a lot of power. Right? The, the whole idea of having these uh, generified uh, collections is that it allows you to, uh, sorry, it, it allows you to have type safe collections. Meaning that when you add something, you, the compiler will catch problems like, oh, if I have a collection of strings, I try to add an integer to it. Nope, it won't let me do that. This is a pretty important concept in uh, in, in Java, and one that I th hope that you get a lot of experience with 
um, in the in the course and in these uh, and with these uh, assignments. So this is what happens when you don't have any type. It's something called type erasure, and uh, and it still compiles and still works, but it isn't as nice. As a matter of fact, let me. Um, I, I think it's also important to see uh, how these methods get called too. So over in your project one, we'll just add some uh, some dummy code to work with a, a phone bill. So we'll say phone bill. Oops. Phone bill, bill equals new phone bill, and we'll call those methods that we that we added, like add phone call, call, <coughs> and so this works, right? Add phone call takes an abstract phone call. That is perfectly okay because phone call itself extends abstract phone call. So the compiler is completely happy with that, and that'll work just fine. Now, um, so, so we can add a phone call to the phone bill, no problem. Uh, but now I want to call that um, that get phone calls phone calls method. So this uh, returns a plain old collection, not a collection of anything, just a collection of well objects. And so then um, here's what I want to do. I'm gonna uh, I want to iterate over each one of these and and print them out. Um, so I'm gonna create a collection sure called phone calls. Uh, and now I want to iterate over all of them. Um, I'll just use the for loop uh, syntax. So for well, for what? Oh, I know. I put, oh, I put a phone call in there so I can get a phone call out, right? Phone call, call in phone calls. And then uh, say system dot out the print line. Oh. oh, I got a red underline. What doesn't it like? Oh, call is already okay. Um, sure, uh, my call, yeah, let's call it C. Okay, now, so we're, okay, incompatible types, required object found phone call, and that's true. The Java compiler doesn't know anything about what's in this collection, right? It's not a collection of anything. As a matter of fact, it's a collection of E, there's no E there, and so it assumes what it can, what it can only assume, which is that it has an object in it. It doesn't know what kind of objects. What we really want then is to say, well, this is a collection of phone calls. If we did that, okay, now there's no more red, but there's this yellow over here. What does this mean? Unchecked assignment. So Java util collection to a collection of phone calls. Well, that's true. So phone calls here, so get phone calls, should really return a collection of phone calls. Okay, well, so everything's compiling right now, but it still doesn't. But there's still another step that I, I want to walk you through. Um, so, because uh, now if I if I run my project one, oh, it gets a this method is not implemented yet. Okay, well, so let's go ahead and implement it. So add phone calls. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll uh, implement add phone calls and get phone calls. So if I add a phone call to my phone bill, um, how do I want to do that? Well, I want to store my phone calls in the phone bill in some collection. So I'll say uh, this.call. So I'll, I'll have a, oops. Um, I'll have a, uh, a collection and I'll just add to it the call. So now I need to figure out what kind of collection I want. So I'll create a field, not a composite name. Um, I want this to just be, well, I don't care what kind of collection it is, it's just a collection. And I want it to be a collection of wrong, <laughs> nice, not even close. Uh, collection, Java Util Collection, there you go, much better. And let's clean up these, uh, oops. Let's clean up these uh, imports up there. Yep, calls. Okay, and I want this to be. Oh, and I want this to be a uh, collection of. Uh, <clears throat> well, really, what I want is a collection of phone calls. And I'm just going to use ArrayList. There. Oh, it's got some. Let's see here. 
contents of collection calls are updated but never queried. That's true. All I do is add. I never return it anyway. But I've got some red underbar right here. It says, ah, okay. I'm trying to add, uh, I'm trying to call the method add on the collection, which it expects to take a phone call, but I can't apply that to an abstract phone call. Well, that's true. Um, the phone call here, uh, this is an abstract phone call. This could be any subclass of phone call. So uh, this guy, this guy uh, won't fit in there. But you know what I can do? I can just change this. I'm going to say, hey, collection of abstract phone call, uh, abstract phone call. Yep, now it's happy. Okay, good. So this is a collection of abstract phone calls. So complain it hasn't been queried. That's fine. So now I can just say return this dot calls. Nope, no, it's not happy there. What isn't it like? Required. Oh, right. This returns a collection of my phone calls, and I gave it an abstract one. Okay, so this collection can't be abstract phone calls. This collection has to be phone calls. No, this guy's not happy, so I need to figure out how to make these two methods happy. I know, I'll just change this right here to phone call. Does that work? Ah! Look at all that stuff. Okay, now what's going on? Okay, so wait, why is this override state? Method does not override method from a superclass. Well, that's interesting. What's the method from the superclass? Maybe this will tell me. Okay. Uh, must be either declared abstract or implement the abstract method add phone call T. Well, that's true. Um, this is what happens when you don't fill in that type T. So, uh, basically, the Java compiler doesn't know what kind of uh, phone call your fo your phone bill uh, contains. So it just makes an assumption that it, it just, well, actually, it makes an assumption that it, it just doesn't know. Um, so, interestingly enough, if I try to fix this, it then adds, oh, it adds back that variation of uh, add phone call that has the abstract phone call. Well, we know that won't work, so I'll undo that change. Let's see here. So now I want to put in a type here. Um, I think what'll work is it'll say phone call. Now everybody's happy. Yep, nice. I think I also had someone ask, well, what happens if you say T extends abstract phone call again? Um, oops, abstract. Hello. Abstract phone call. Oh, interesting. Okay, it, doesn't, it really doesn't like that. Um, oh, actually, it goes back to the way it was uh, a little while ago, but even worse, right? It's complaining this doesn't override the method from the superclass. And it says that now you have two uh, get phone call methods with different return type, and they aren't compatible. So that's a mess. That doesn't work. And there might be ways that you can fix this. Like, uh, well, I'm going to see what happens if I try to implement the methods. OK, it adds a type T. So what we're doing here is um, we're actually declaring another um, yeah, we're, we're declaring another, actually, well, we need to declare another um, variable, t uh, another variable type. And this is where it gets confusing. So, I mean, at this point, if you just, like, watch what we did in, like, the first two minutes and said, oh, okay, yeah, I just want to get it right, that's fine. Um, but this is some of the pitfalls that people might have encountered um, while, while working with this. Some people might have tried to declare another uh, type T, which is, uh, which is possible, uh, but it's not really correct, because then you have... Uh, problems uh, with all of this stuff. Actually, you know what, you probably, I bet you could get to work like this. Um, I bet if you, I bet if you deleted that, and if you change this to collection of T, and then made this a collection of T, and then you go back to your project one, it's probably complaining about things all over the place, right? Saying, hey, this thing takes a T. So if I did a phone bill of phone call, and then this is also another, that actually works. And it's that, that, and so like, hey, th this compiles and this works. I don't think it's the best it could be. Um, I think the, uh, probably, the solution I had in mind was sort of what we had before, where uh, you bind the type T here in the, uh, in the, the declaration, and you, uh, you know, I'm just going to undo a little bit. Oh, actually, here's what I'm going to do. 
Um, I've been moving pretty fast, so I don't know if I can go back. Let's see here. Local history, show history. Seven minutes ago, what did it look like? Uh, I, I moved too fast and it didn't. How about this? No, I, I think it blew it away, but this is... Eh, I'll just go ahead and redo it. Actually, did, was this one okay? No, that was like before it had anything. Okay. Never mind. I'll click just fix it. So we want the collection to be a collection of phone calls. Uh, we want this to take... Oops. We want add phone call to take a phone call. And we'll say this.calls.add call. And then we want phone calls to create, get phone calls to be a collection of phone call. Everybody's happy there. Here, now we no longer have this generic type because we don't need it. And I'm going a little fast, and if it's not all making sense to you, I think that's okay for now. Uh, because this is what I expected the, the phone bill class to, to look like. So your phone bill extends my phone bill and uh, with a type of your phone call. And now what you have is inside your class, you can just deal with your other classes. Um, otherwise, uh, you have to do a lot of casting. And maybe I can, can I show that? Actually, well, I think you kind of saw that when uh, the phone bill of return things like a collection of abstract phone bill, you had to do casting, things didn't compile correctly. Um, ultimately, this is what you want. I think that answers the questions that I got. So I'm going to stop the screencast here, actually, make a nice little short one, uh, get this posted for you, and um, hopefully this will help you uh, today. There's more to come. Um, I want to explain about uh, some of the handouts uh, and stuff, uh, like how to document your projects and how to submit your projects. Um, then there's also, I'm going to uh, talk about project two. Um, and then also, uh, there's some more things about unit testing that I didn't show you in particular, the integration tests, which I think will help you work on your, uh, command line, um, your, your project one class, uh, and then project two also, um, much better. So, uh, I'm going to sign off for now and, uh, I'll be back later with another podcast, podcast, oh my gosh, another screencast.